Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting and Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkoviak. Today we're going to talk about practicing from a tree stand. I have right up there. This is very important to do. When it gets closer to the season, you kind of transition into doing this. And I'll talk about what to do if you don't have a setup like this. But um, as you guys watch me throughout the year, I'm usually shooting up here by the house at my, you know, I got a deer target, a bear target, and a bag target there that I can shoot at anywhere from, you know, from where they're set up now from the house, I can be out to 33 yards to the bag target from against there. And, you know, so I got all this setup that I can be right there. Um, but when it gets closer to the season, you want to transition into tree stand practice because we're hunting from tree stand. So here I have my tree stand set up. I got my try. All this stuff's going to be used during this video as we get up there. But here I have a ladder stand that I've been practicing from forever. Look how long it's been there. You can tell. Look at it. It's doing to the tree even. I mean, this thing is just kind of been here for many many years and it's what i practice from and it gives me real world experience i have trees that are right here i got them tucked into specific spots uh from up there you'll see that one is a shoot through between these branches so it's kind of a um a real world scenario for me and uh, i have three targets out here well four if you count that little black shih tzu there five if you count a five yard shot on a white shih tzu right there but uh, those are my moving targets. I'm kidding completely. But uh, but we got a, a deer here at eight yards. So if I'm actually right here is where I'm standing on that stand. I got a deer at eight yards, another deer at 16 yards, and another deer at 22 yards. So this is my broadhead course that I shoot from the tree stands and I also, my tree stand practice course. Now, when we're getting into this time of year, this harness I'm wearing even is my dedicated practice harness. It's not my harness I hunt in. It's one that I wear. It stays right there by the back door so I can walk out, grab it, climb right up in here, and I'm ready to, to practice with it on. Always practice with a harness on. You should actually also be practicing everything this time of year with your hunting clothes on that you do. Okay, so your jackets, your shirts, make sure you're going to clear your arm with your arm guard or whatever you got to do. Make sure your, your hat's going to work. Um, all that stuff you should be wearing. The only reason I'm not wearing it right now is because I'm actually an internet celebrity and it's important that you guys see my guns. So otherwise I would be wearing that stuff right now too. Um, but you should practice with it and honestly I do all the time. It's just it's pretty warm day today. I'm not putting it on for the video. But um, but whenever you get a cooler day, wear that gear so you can actually be practicing in that stuff and find out if you will hit your arm. If anything is on your shirt is going to snag or catch that string. Any of that kind of stuff is important to test out. We're five days before the season starts here. For the last week and a half, two weeks, all my practice has been from up there, so it's important that you do that. But your your visual is different from a tree stand. When you're up here shooting, how these animals look in relationship to their distance from you will really offset that, that uh, rangefinder capability of your mind, okay? They will look, down here on the ground, they look a certain distance. Once you get up there, that's a 16 foot ladder stand. Now normally I'm higher than that because uh, that platform is probably at about 14 feet, 15 feet. I'm usually can, you know, but it works for practice. It's just a matter of getting up and elevated. But the higher you go, the further the deer look um, from up above compared to the distance they are, which means that if you don't practice this setup and shooting from a tree stand, very often you will shoot high over the top of them, sometimes low, but you will usually shoot high because they look further than they are. If you're one of these guys that does all the string creeping and walking stuff and your gap shooters and you're, you're adjusting all this stuff for yardage without using a range finder, you're just looking at it going, okay, that's 25. I got to go did, 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 did this one right here. This is where I hold my arrows, whatever. Um, however you guys do this stuff that's going to be a big issue for you if you're practicing on the ground all the time because you are going to assume that like i said we look at this here we go 8 16 22 well when we get up there and we're looking way down on these our mind might say 12 18 26 and then now you're going to be shooting high and missing them plus you got gravitational effect on the arrow at the farther distant ones you got so you have things that have to be taken into consideration. And the only way to make sure that that's legit is to practice them. Practice them from up there. What do you do if you don't have a tree stand set up like this? Okay, hang your tree stand. Go somewhere where you can shoot, okay, any place it is, even your hunting property, and take your stand and your sticks and throw them up in a tree. Bring your wife, your kid, somebody with you, your spouse, whatever you got, and then have them collect the arrows for you. We use this quiver right here, which is nice. You know, this is my bow haul line, so I can pull my bow right up the tree, and uh, then we have um, 
the quiver right here, this quiver I just tie right on here, and that way whoever pulls my arrows for me, if I have somebody out here, they can pull the arrows, drop them in that quiver, and I can bring my arrows up to me. So it's a very, or like when I pull them, I can sit them in there, so I'm not climbing with all my practice arrows on me. Put them right in the quiver, pull them up, I hang that quiver by this little tab right here on that rope. It's up there, and that quiver sits right there and holds all my practice arrows. So it's a very simple system. Forgive me for some of it. This got chewed through by squirrels, so I actually had to cut it off up there. I'm not using that, but I am, like I said, wearing a full harness uh, that does get connected up there. I actually still use this strap on it for this harness, but it, it's all set up and ready to roll. Safety is paramount. Make sure you're wearing your harness. Um, it is a good idea to practice in the harness you hunt with so again you can see if any buckles are going to get in the way when you scrunch up if you're going to snag on this stuff um anything's going to be interference it's going to pull on your shoulders wrong or something like that figure that out um again I, I practice a lot out of my harness that i wear all the time and i hang stands all year long to stay stay good with it so i, I, I got no worries there but you should definitely practice it if you're you haven't um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to set this up. I'm going to set it up two ways. I'm going to uh, set up my phone out here by these, each of these so you can see the shots. And, uh, you know, and then I'm going to actually have my uh, Osmo Action Cam that is hanging right here. This little dude right here on my forehead. And uh, so you get real world perspective. And we're going to shoot uh, four arrows at each of these targets here for you to kind of get a feel uh, for what we're talking about and how it feels to practice from there. When you are on your tree stand, it is important that you remember your correct angles. So if I put you on, let's put you on a tripod for a sec. Okay, now I've done videos on this as well too. So this is not nothing new. I have full, a whole video dedicated to this on why you miss when shooting from a tree stand. But for example, it's still very important for you to keep that bending from the waist stuff together. Okay, if you're used to shooting on the ground, I'll stay, you know, I shoot candid and hunched in. Forget that, we'll just shoot you guys here. Uh, most people do, so it's straight up and down. You come back like this, you lock in, boom, you shoot on the ground. Okay, that's how you're set up and doing it. Well, if you get into a tree stand and you do this too, and then you just go like this and shoot, you got problems. That's not going to work for you. You need to keep that alignment and shoot in that position which is one of the reasons i can't my bow look at how weird all this gets you know but uh so for me it's easy because i can't so it's much simpler to do that but you need to get this alignment here it has to stay it cannot do this okay you can't have that happen it has to be all bending at the waist to bring that alignment in one of the biggest reasons that people shoot over top of animals from a tree stand. They're used to shooting on the ground like this. Then they get up in a tree and they do this and they just do this. And they, they don't bend in. They just look at it and they go right there and they do this. And they just look down. And now they've overdrawn that arrow another inch and a half. And they're, everything's out of whack and they shoot over top of them. Very important that you make sure you keep the same alignment you do from the ground. And how you shoot all the time. And then just let the hip do the work for you on how you're gonna make that shot, make sure the hip is what actually does it. Bend the knee, drop the hip, but keep all of this alignment the same way. Again, one of the great reasons for me shooting in a canted position like I do already, because this is nothing for me to do this. This is real easy. Even in front of me right here, without even turning my legs, you know, for somebody shooting this way to try and come down, that's hard, it's gotta go in there. For me, canted, it's real easy to shoot anywhere I want. So, very important that you understand that. And again, I have a whole video dedicated to that. Maybe I'll link it at the end of this for you. All right, let's get the camera set, get up there and shoot some arrows for you. All right, eight yards, here we go. Just like hunting, same scenario. Take your time, wait for that to come in. Don't just get up here and fling arrows, think of it as hunting. Right there like that. Think of it as actual real hunting scenarios.
This one we're gonna wait. He's waiting, waiting. There it is. Real world hunting setups. Take your time. Wait for that to come in. Don't just get up here and fling arrows. Think of it as hunting. Right there like that. Think of it as actual real hunting scenarios. This one we're gonna wait. He's waiting, waiting. There it is. And there is our eight yard shooting right there. Perfect. Got no complaints on that whatsoever. But again, simple eight yard distance right there, but works fantastic. Now we're gonna go back to that 16. Now, if we play this right, these arrows should blow right through if we hit in the right spots. <coughs> Ooh, that one dropped a little bit. All right, there's 22. You can see it looks pretty far from here, and it is, especially from a tree stand. It's a whole different ball game for a traditional hunter. <coughs> see what I mean? What did I tell you about shooting a little high because you misrepresent, uh, you know, your mind tricks you sometimes. Same, I mean, perfect example of it right there. Looks farther than it is. Right there, right through the middle, that's where we're looking for. But my first shot, a little high. Not used to that distance um, compared to how these ones here look to what that one looks like. And that's how it's done, right there. But you can see the difference, slide you over so you're centered, between that, that, and that. Tremendous difference between 8 yards, 16 yards, and 22 yards when you are in the woods. Whole different ball game. Um, or when you're in a tree, too, as well. You want to practice this real-world setups? We're going to head down there. Pretty far from here, and it is. Especially from a tree stand. It's a whole different ball game for a traditional hunter. <laughs> See what I mean? What did I tell you about shooting a little high because you misrepresent, uh, you know, your mind tricks you sometimes. Same, same perfect example of it right there. Looks farther than it is. Right there, right through the middle, that's where we're looking for. But my first shot little high. Not used to that distance um, compared to how these ones here look to what that one looks like. And 
And that's how it's done, right there. But you can see the difference. All right, and there's our 22 yarders. You can see this one here, that was my first shot. That was that high one, that's bad. That's a horrible shot. We would not be happy with that even a little bit. It's important you practice that. The other three perfect blew right through here. Like I said, these targets are pretty, pretty done. Um, but blew right through there, uh, right through the sweet spot. So all the other three will take, but that first one uh, with that playing tricks on your mind from that distance, you know, 22 yards away, it's just weird up there. So it's it, this is not uncommon. Again, I shoot this so often out here at this course, um, you know, this time of year, that this result is not very uncommon. So it's very important that you practice from a tree stand at variable distances so that you can get all that stuff dialed in, get it all set, get it all perfect. That way uh, you're not gonna run into those scenarios. I got five more days and uh, I'll keep shooting out here every single day, at least a dozen, two dozen arrows if I can, whatever I can, whenever I can, and get all of this dialed in. Thanks for watching.